Hi, my name is Jeff Petzinger and the purpose of this video is to present some background information for my Indiegogo project. For those of you who have found this video without coming from Indiegogo, my project is called Evolutionary Piano and my goal is to replace the wooden soundboard of a grand piano with a carbon fiber composite soundboard optimized with evolutionary computing techniques. The purpose of this video is to give you some background as to why I want to do this and what the potential benefits will be. After you watch this background video, I encourage you to go to Indiegogo.com, look at my project, and seriously consider lending me your support. The reasons for doing this are familiar to anyone who owns a piano or has shopped for a used piano. The soundboard absorbs moisture from the atmosphere, causing it to grow and shrink based on the humidity of the room it's in. Throughout the year, and even day to day, humidity levels can change significantly. Years of this growing and shrinking eventually lead to the soundboard cracking, usually along the glue lines where the individual boards of the soundboard have been joined together. This is why there is a thriving piano rebuilding business, in part to repair or replace damaged soundboards. Also, the swelling and shrinking of the soundboard can negatively affect the tuning of the piano. There's nothing quite so satisfying as playing a freshly tuned piano and nothing so disappointing as listening to that tuned state degenerate with even one change in the weather. Wood is a natural product and as such its material properties are inconsistent. Every tree and every board used in a soundboard is slightly different. This means that there is a slight mismatch of the material properties between adjacent boards and the soundboard which causes a loss in acoustical efficiency. All of these differences can cause drastic changes in the sound of the piano to the point where the piano you play in the showroom may not sound like the piano you buy. Some people claim that old pianos sound better than new pianos because they were built with a higher quality tone wood and air dried for several years before building a soundboard. It is true that high quality tone wood is increasingly rare and that many manufacturers do not take the time to air dry the wood to fully develop the acoustic properties. Their accountants just can't stand the sight of a warehouse full of wood just sitting there consuming capital. So going forward, it may be time to adopt new materials to replace the disappearing tone wood and costly processes associated with it. Composites are structurally superior and more consistent than natural materials such as wood. The challenge is to make composite materials imitate the acoustic properties of wood. Specific strength is the strength of the material divided by its density. In general, a high specific strength material will make a better soundboard. The spruce used for traditional piano soundboards has a very good specific strength, but nowhere near that of carbon fiber composite. The drawback to the high strength of carbon fiber is that it can create a metallic sounding soundboard similar to aluminum. This occurs because carbon fiber does not have the same amount of acoustic damping that wood does. Wood has a higher damping coefficient that causes high frequencies to quickly damp out. The low damping coefficient of carbon fiber composite can also result in a longer sustain. While this normally would be considered a good thing, the sustain could be unnaturally long for a piano. Wood is an amalgam of fibers and pores and resin that damp sound waves on a macro as well as on a micro level. Fortunately, judicious choices in fiber type, fiber orientation, resin type, and fillers give the composite engineer a broad palette to tailor the sound of the composite to that of wood and impart a bright or mellow tone. In fact, the ability to craft a unique sound and reproduce it again and again is one of the advantages of composite materials. The technical goals of this project begin with designing a carbon fiber composite soundboard to replace wooden soundboards. Beyond addressing the reliability issues already raised, I want to use the superior material properties of composite materials to eliminate the reinforcing ribs that are necessary on wooden soundboards. The reinforcing ribs impart a crown to the soundboard, add stiffness, and distribute the sound waves across the entire board. Unfortunately, the ribs also ruin the modal density of the soundboard in the upper octaves. The project has two main goals, which are really just one goal applied to two different situations. The main goal is to create a design methodology that optimizes the size, shape, and material properties of a carbon fiber composite soundboard using the string architecture as an input. For legacy piano designs, the perimeter shape is partially constrained to the existing shape of the piano. The second, more exciting goal 
is to design a custom piano that has no physical constraints on the size and shape of the soundboard. The design space will be enlarged to let the computer discover the optimum size and shape for the given string architecture. Evolutionary computing is a technique by which an optimum design is discovered by defining the available design space, applying loads and constraints to the model, and giving the computer design goals and fitness criteria to measure the fitness of the design. The computer then begins an intelligent search to find the optimum size and shape of the soundboard. The computer will make a small change and then evaluate it to see if it was good or bad. The good design lives on and the bad design dies out. Every once in a while, the computer will drop in a mutation just to make sure the computer is closing in on the best design and not simply just a good design. In this manner, hundreds or even thousands of designs are built and tested in the computer more than could ever be built and tested in real life. The result is a part, or soundboard in this case, that is perfectly adapted to its purpose. To illustrate what this process looks like, watch this video of a motorcycle chassis being evolved in the computer and then converted to a manufacturable product. One of the outputs of this project will be a similar video showing the evolution of the perfect piano soundboard. In this case, the design space will be defined by the space made available by the testbed piano, which includes an enlarged perimeter shape, the crown height, and the bridge locations. The load is the downbearing force of the strings in the bridge, and the constraint is the clamped perimeter of the soundboard into a perimeter shape determined by the computer. The design goals include keeping the stresses within certain material limits, targeting a first volume frequency, and achieving a desired acoustic response. This is the point at which I'm going to get deliberately vague. All of the things that have been mentioned up to this point are fairly obvious, but achieving the right sound depends on describing that perfect sound to the computer so it understands what its goals are. I have found a way to describe that sound with a combination of information found in technical papers and patents and tempered with practical knowledge of how to build the soundboard provided by the composites manufacturer. However, there is one thing I will share with you that illustrates the opportunity a composite soundboard holds. Modal density describes how resonating structures sound and is roughly a measure of how many natural frequencies are available to respond to the acoustic input of the strings. The multicolored dots in this graph are measurements of modal densities taken from real pianos. The green line is a curve describing the modal density of a theoretically perfect piano. The red line roughly summarizes the measured data from the real pianos. The large light blue area in the treble section above 1100 Hz is the opportunity for improvement. This large gap is caused mostly by the reinforcing ribs of wooden soundboards. If the reinforcing ribs can be eliminated with a composite material, the red line will more closely follow the green line, the large late blue area in the treble section will be reduced, and the sound should become much more complex and interesting than wooden soundboards currently allow it to be. Modal density is affected by the thickness, area, density, and strength of the soundboard. The computer will select and juggle these variables and calculate the modal density across the frequency band of a piano with the goal of creating a soundboard that follows the green line in this graph as closely as possible. 
All of these variables may be different at any given point on the soundboard, but the computer is capable of calculating all of those values and using them to determine modal density. When you consider it as doing all of this, and varying the perimeter and cross-sectional shape, accounting for the downbearing force of the strings while targeting a fundamental frequency and staying below certain material limits, you begin to understand how complex the problem is and how unlikely it is that the current build it and break it design cycle used to develop wooden soundboard technology could ever produce a soundboard that is anywhere near as good as a composite can be. Let's talk about the project plan for a moment. The project will begin with a piano collaboratively designed by David Rubenstein of Rubenstein Pianos and Delwyn Fondrick. David Rubenstein designs and builds high-end custom pianos in his shop in Los Angeles and will execute the construction of this piano. Delwyn Fondrick is a legendary piano engineer who has served as the head of research for Baldwin Piano and is currently consulting on many custom and commercial piano designs. Although one of David's existing pianos already has a very workable scale design, the scale may be changed by Del Fondrick to be more compatible with the composite soundboard. Knowledge of the string tensions and angles will provide all of the necessary inputs for the simulation. The design space for the composite soundboard will be expanded to give the computer the freedom it needs to find an optimum size and shape. Once the soundboard design is complete, the remaining details of the design will be completed and manufacturing will begin. Simulation will begin by simulating a known good wooden soundboard. The results will be examined to see if the simulation delivers the modal density that would be expected for a ribbed wooden soundboard. This is important because the evolution of the composite soundboard will be driven by several fitness criteria that have certain expected values. If the simulation does not return those values, the cause needs to be identified or possibly the fitness criteria needs to be adjusted. In any case, there would be no way to know if the composite soundboard is an improvement unless the performance of a known good wooden soundboard is quantified first. The simulation of the composite soundboard will progress in stages. The first step is to do a static analysis of the soundboard to see if it is capable of resisting the downbearing forces. This first step will be performed on an educated guess, fixed geometry with fixed material properties, and the results will be used to adjust the design space. Second, a modal analysis will be performed on the same fixed geometry, which finds all of the natural frequencies over a frequency range. The results will be used to get the modal density fitness criteria working and to take a first look at the acoustic properties of the composite soundboard. Next, those two analyses will be repeated, but this time the size and shape of the soundboard will be allowed to evolve, but the material properties will remain fixed. Finally, the full optimization will be performed that allows the geometry and material properties to be changed simultaneously. The point of this step-by-step -step process is that the lessons learned at each step are used in the next analysis. The soundboard will come closer to its final shape after each step, so that when the final optimization is performed, it will launch from a point that is very close to the final design. The results of the final optimization will be a CAD file that can be used to make a tool to manufacture the composite soundboard. Only one soundboard will be produced at first. It will be installed in the piano and tested. Money in this project has been budgeted for three soundboards in order to provide the opportunity to change and identify the correct amount of damping in the board. Unfortunately, damping is something that is nearly impossible to simulate and is better assessed through physical testing. Building and rebuilding the piano, possibly up to three times, with three different soundboards is, unfortunately, a laborious task. The tension on the strings must be relieved, the bridge of graphs disengaged, the string plate removed, the soundboard removed and replaced, the bridge of graphs transferred to the new bridges and soundboard, and then the string plate and string set reinstalled, tuned, and regulated. The final cosmetic finish will not be applied at this point to avoid the inevitable dents and nicks that will occur during such extensive rebuilding. After each new soundboard is installed, the piano will undergo testing that involves both playing it and measuring it acoustically. As difficult as this process sounds, keep in mind that this is the only process that traditional manufacturers 
had to develop their pianos, except they did not have the advantage of computer simulation to guide their development cycles. To be fair, some modern piano manufacturers have used simulation to guide their design cycles, but to my knowledge, they have not applied that to a composite soundboard or used evolutionary computing techniques. As with any new endeavor, a lot of learning takes place the first time it is done. Once this design process has been successfully executed, many of the simulation steps will be eliminated. The design space will be better defined so less effort can be spent defining a good starting point for the computer. This process can then be applied to legacy piano designs except that the design space may be more constrained by their existing case outlines. The final result will be a slightly less than optimum soundboard design but one that is as good as it can be within the existing case. One of the final products of this project is the process to convert legacy piano designs to composite soundboard technology. The other more exciting output of this project will be a totally custom piano. A full optimization will be run on a custom string architecture. The design space will be expanded to give the computer maximum freedom to find an optimum solution. From this, a custom piano will be designed and built. To contrast this with the legacy piano process, the legacy piano begins with a fixed case shape and string architecture and finds the best soundboard that fits inside of that envelope. The custom piano finds the best soundboard without the case shape constraint and builds the piano around that optimized soundboard. Other structures in the custom piano, such as the rim plate, inner structure, and string plate, will be optimized to reduce weight, maximize strength, and meet acoustical goals. I won't go into a lot of detail on those parts, since it is not the main goal of this project to optimize them. However, the result could also be very unique and interesting compared to traditional pianos. The last step is to build and test the custom piano. David Rubenstein will build a custom piano based on the output of the simulations. As mentioned before, he will install a carbon fiber composite soundboard up to three times as needed. Hopefully this won't be necessary. The piano will be based on David's R310 design. A new rim press or modification to his existing rim press will provide the freedom to explore any new shape soundboard the simulation specifies. It will have a 97 key scale including 9 extra active bass keys. The combination of the large size, extra keys, and the composite soundboard will hopefully result in a piano that is as monumental in its performance as it is in its size. The piano will be finished with a high gloss, black polyester, and the final result will be showroom quality. And now, on to the rewards. As of this writing, the rewards for project contributors are still under development. I think it goes without saying that you will not receive a free sample grand piano for contributing. However, all contributors will receive electronically delivered audio files comparing the custom piano to a traditional concert grand such as the Steinway D or Bosendorfer Imperial. A limited number of early contributors will receive paracord wristbands to display their support for the project. Intermediate contributors will also receive a DVD of a documentary by Harry Bramley Davenport on the development of the evolutionary piano. At this time, I am planning on moving the piano to multiple shops around the country and hold receptions for higher level contributors where they will have an opportunity to see and play the piano firsthand. At the end of this tour, the piano will be offered for sale to fund the next round of production. Looking to the future, I hope to manufacture and sell a limited number of these high-end, technologically advanced pianos in order to introduce the technology to the piano market. I am hopeful that, at some point, piano buyers and manufacturers of traditional pianos will become comfortable enough with composite soundboard technology to adopt it, at least for some of their high-end instruments. I hope this video has provided sufficient detail about the project plan to inspire you to contribute. Right now, piano technology is stuck, and the situation will only improve if piano enthusiasts, like yourself, support projects like this one that are trying to move the instrument forward and take it to new levels of performance. If you choose to support this project, 
you will receive periodic progress and technical updates so that you can follow along with the development of this piano. By joining the Evolutionary Piano community, you will be actively affecting a change in piano technology instead of merely being a passive user. So please, go to Indiegogo.com and contribute to the Evolutionary Piano Project. Thanks for listening.